So friends, welcome to today, our uh, midweek contemplation and scripture service. This will be our last for the summer. Um, we'll take a break for a couple of weeks and then we'll um, rejoin each other for this service uh, during Advent. There will be a prayer service that will be held um, sometime starting in September. I haven't yet decided when, but I will let you know soon. And that will be focusing just on prayer practices in the Christian tradition. So there won't be the liturgy and scripture that we've been doing um, like these services until Advent. But there will be a time to kind of take a break and join each other in prayer uh, and fellowship. So without further ado, I'm going to share my screen. And I just ask that you join me out loud, whether you're watching this later or if you're joining live right now for the people. Let us be called to worship. If it had not been the Lord who was on our side, let Israel now say, if it had not been the Lord who was on our side when our enemies attacked us, then they would have swallowed us up alive when their anger was kindled against us. Then the flood would have swept us away. The torrent would have gone over us. Then over us would have gone the raging waters. Blessed be the Lord who has not given us as prey to their teeth. We have escaped like a bird from the snare of the fowlers. The snare is broken and we have escaped. Our help is in the name of the Lord who made heaven and earth. Let us pray. Gracious and holy God, we give you thanks for this moment and this place and time where you invite us to pause, to join each other in virtual fellowship, to be silent, to pray, to read your scriptures, and to hear that still silent word you speak to us now. We ask that you open our hearts, that you still our minds, that you draw us closer to you, and that we leave this place closer, more connected, more at peace, more open. We ask this all in your Son, Jesus Christ's name. Amen. Arise, O God, maintain your cause. Remember how the fools revile you all day long. And you, O Lord, have I taken refuge. Let me never be put to shame. Deliver me and your righteousness. Now a new king arose over Egypt who did not know Joseph. He said to his people, look, the Israelite people are more numerous and more powerful than we. Come, let us deal shrewdly with them, or they will increase, and in the event of war, join our enemies and fight against us and escape from the land. Therefore, they set taskmasters over to oppress them with forced labor. They built supply cities, Pitom and Ramas, for Pharaoh. But the more they were oppressed, the more they multiplied and spread, so that the Egyptians came to dread the Israelites. The Egyptians became ruthless in imposing tasks on the Israelites, and made their lives bitter with hard service, in mortar, in brick, and in every kind of field labor. They were ruthless in all the tasks that they imposed on them. The king of Egypt said to the Hebrew midwives, one of them who was named Shipra and the other Hua. When you act as midwives to the Hebrew women and see them on the birth stool, if it is a boy, kill him. But if it is a girl, she shall live. The midwives feared God. They did not do as the king of Egypt commanded them, but they let the boys live. So the king of Egypt summoned the midwives and said to them, why have you done this and allowed the boys to live? The midwife said to Pharaoh, because the Hebrew women are not like the Egyptian women, for they are vigorous and give birth before the midwife comes to them. So God dealt well with the midwives, and the people multiplied and became very strong. And because of the midwives feared God, 
he gave them families. Then Pharaoh commanded all his people, every boy that is born to the Hebrews, you shall throw into the Nile, but you shall let every girl live. Now, a man from the house of Levi went and married a Levite woman. The woman conceived and bore a son. And when she saw that he was a fine baby, she hid him three months. When she could hide him no longer, she got a papyrus basket for him and plastered it with butumen and pitch. She put the child in it and placed it among the reeds on the bank of the river. And his sister stood at a distance to see what would happen to him. And the daughter of Pharaoh came down to bathe at the river while her attendants walked beside the river. She saw the basket among the reeds and sent her maid to bring it. When she opened it, she saw the child. He was crying and she took pity on him. This must be one of the Hebrews' children, she said. And his sister said to Pharaoh's daughter, shall I go and get you a nurse from the Hebrew woman to nurse the child for you? Pharaoh's daughter said to her, yes. So the girl went and called the child's mother. Pharaoh's daughter said to her, take this child and nurse it for me and I will give you your wages. So the woman took the child and nursed it. When the child grew up, she brought him to Pharaoh's daughter and she took him as her son. She named him Moses because she said, I drew him out of the water. Thank you, Sally. And our gospel reading comes from the gospel of Matthew from the 16th chapter. Now, when Jesus had came into this district of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, who do people say that the son of man is? And they said, some say John the Baptist, but others Elijah, and still others Jeremiah or one of the prophets. He said to them, but who do you say that I am? Simon Peter answered, you are the Messiah, the son of the living God. And Jesus answered him, Blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my Father in heaven. And I tell you, you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gate of Hades will not prevail against it. I will give you the keys to the kingdom of heaven, and whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. Whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Then he sternly ordered the disciples not to tell anyone that he was a Messiah. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So friends, now comes the time in our midweek service where we take a break to just be quiet and to pray. And so I invite you to get into a comfortable position and Close your eyes and just take a second to kind of pay attention. Notice how you're feeling, both mentally and physically. Don't try to do anything about it, but just pay attention. Maybe you're noticing some aches or pains. Maybe you're noticing a little worry. There's something you forgot to do. Someone you need to call, an email you need to respond to. That will all be there when we're done praying. So just don't worry about it right now. I'm just taking a couple seconds kind of stop and pause. Now I want you to take your attention and put it on your breath. And just pay attention to the way your body breathes. Just breathing normally. You might notice your breath slowing down. That's completely fine. Just kind of follow your body's intu intuition.
Pay attention to the way the breath comes in. Does your chest rise? Does your belly go out? How does the breath feel coming out? Is it rolling over your nose? Is it passing over your lips? Use your breath as an anchor. If any thoughts come to mind, just let them pass and return to your breath. In your next in-breath, take a deeper breath in and allow your belly to expand outward. If it helps, you can put your hand on your stomach and let it swell up like a balloon or a basketball. Hold it for just a second and then breathe out and allow your belly to come back towards your spine to deflate like a balloon would. Continue drawing in deeper breaths, letting your belly move outward, holding it for just a second, and then breathing out, letting your belly come in. It might feel strange or awkward at first. It's completely normal. Most of the day, we don't pay attention to our breathing and they're shallow breaths and they come from our chest. We're taking a moment though to breathe as we should, these deep breaths, these breaths that come from our deep, deep in our belly. Remembering to take a deep breath in our belly is expanding out, continuing to expand out, and then pausing for just a second, and then breathing out, a long breath out, a controlled breath, and allowing the belly to come in, getting all the air out of our lungs, the diaphragms pushing up against the lungs and pushing that air out. Continue breathing at your own rate, but remembering to follow this pattern of breathing in, belly out, and then breathing out, belly coming in. Allow your attention to be focused on your breath. If you have any thoughts, that's completely fine distractions arise, worries, it's completely fine. Just let them pass, let them flow down that river and return back to your breath. Now I want you on your next breath Imagine you are breathing in God's grace and God's light. That it's filling your lungs, going into your bloodstream and spreading throughout your body. And then pause, and rest in that moment, and then breathe out deeply whatever darkness you are carrying. Whatever stress has been bothering you, whatever anxiety has been plaguing you, whatever it is, breathe it out.
breathing in God's grace and light, continuing to allow our bellies to expand, to draw in that full breath, imagining God's grace and light filling our body, holding it for just a second, resting in that peaceful moment, and then breathing out all the stress, the anxiety, the worries that we carry. Some of them might even be unknown. Just breathing out whatever it is we feel, whether it's known or unknown. Breathing it out, allowing our bellies to come all the way in, to push all that air out. Continuing at your own pace, breathing in God's grace and light. Breathing out whatever it is that bothers you. Let your mind Continue to focus on your breath and that image of God's grace and light. You're here simply to be in God's presence, nothing else. Let that be enough. And use your out breath to help guide you there. Breathe out the worries, whatever it is, to breathe it out. Before we transition to our time of silence, let's all take a deep breath together. I'll give you a couple seconds to gather yourselves. Let's all take a deep breath now, breathing in deep, continuing to breathe in, allowing our bellies to expand. Keep breathing in, we're doing a deep, deep breath. And now hold it, continue to hold it. And now breathe out, let it all out. Deep breath out, long deep breath out. Flow until there's nothing left inside. And one more deep breath in. Continuing to breathe in. Now hold it. Okay, and then breathe out, all the way out. Every little ounce of worry, concern, stress, it's all coming out. And I invite you now to just rest silently in God's presence or to reflect on the gospel passage or even the story of Moses, however you'd like to spend these few moments of silence.
and now praying as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. So now let us join in the Benedictus and I'll invite you to join me when I read the refrain, you have come to your people and set them free. Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, for he has looked favorably on his people and redeemed them. He has raised up a mighty savior for us in the house of his servant, David. You have come to your people and set them free. He spoke through the mouth of his holy prophets from of old, that we would be saved from our enemies and from the hand of all who hate us. Thus he has shown the mercy promised to our ancestors and has remembered his holy covenant. You have come to your people and set them free. This is the oath that he swore to our ancestor Abraham to grant us that we, being rescued from the hands of our enemies, might serve him without fear in holiness and righteousness before him all our days. You have come to your people and set them free. And you, child, will be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his ways, to give knowledge of salvation to his people by the forgiveness of their sins. You have come to your people and set them free. By the tender mercy of our God, the dawn from on high will break upon us to give light to those who sit in darkness and in the shadow of death, to guide our feet into the way of peace. You have come to your people and set them free. The epistle reading is Romans 12, 1 through 8. I appeal to you, therefore, brothers and sisters, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your spiritual worship. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your minds so that you may discern what is the will of God, what is good and acceptable and perfect. For by the grace given to me, I say to everyone among you not to think of yourself more highly than you ought to think, but to think with sober judgment, each according to the measure of faith that God has assigned. For as in one body, we have many members and not all the members have the same function. So we who are many as one body in Christ and individually we are members one of another. We have gifts that differ according to the grace given to us. Prophecy in proportion to faith, ministry in ministering, the teacher in teaching, the exhorter in exhortation, the giver in generosity, the leader in diligence, the compassionate in cheerfulness. Thanks, Susan. And let's now all join together in the colic. Eternal God, your hand shaped our lays by grace and your hand rescued us from sin by love. May your hand guide us through this day, shielding us from evil, strengthening us to do justice and love. In Jesus Christ, our Lord, amen. The God of peace be with us, amen. Bless the Lord. The Lord's name be praised. Be praised. Thank y'all for joining. I will um, see you before Advent, but we will reset, uh, restart this this pattern of midweek worship in Advent. But like I mentioned, there will be um, a time for prayer um, that will be weekly, and that will start sometime in September. And I will have more information for you soon. Thank y'all for Thank joining. You.